It's never been easier to fly with Datalink weather in the cockpit, and the right solution can really improve your flying safety. But there's a lot to choose from. Sirius XM, ADS-B, portable, panel mount. Let's look at all the options and find the right answer for you. I'm John Zimmerman, an ATP and aviation writer, and I'm here at the Air Safety Institute to look at two cockpit technologies that have changed the way we look at weather in the air, Sirius XM and ADS-B. We'll be looking at the differences and similarities between the two systems. We'll explore some of the options for portable avionics, and we'll look at the weather products you can see in the cockpit. Datalink weather can make your flying a lot safer, but only if you understand the technology and use it properly in the cockpit. Understanding either one of these systems in the avionics goes much deeper than we can hit in this video, so make sure whatever system you fly with, you spend some time flying with it and understanding all of the intricacies of it. From a pilot's perspective, Sirius XM and ADS-B really look pretty similar in the cockpit, but the systems behind them are quite different. Sirius XM uses satellites, so you're getting weather from above, which means there are no altitude restrictions, no geographic coverage limitations inside the continental U.S. Basically, you can turn it on and start getting weather. ADS-B is a little bit different. ADS-B is transmitted from a network of ground stations all throughout the U.S. So, sort of like VORs, altitude is going to improve your reception. If you're on the ground at an airport, it's likely you won't be getting ADS-B weather. As you get up to altitude, certainly a couple thousand feet above ground, most places in the U.S., you'll be getting coverage. So this is the first important distinction to understand is where do you fly and how far do you fly because the limitations of these systems may come into play. For example, Sirius XM does offer coverage in southern Canada. With ADS-B being U.S. only and ground-based, you're going to lose reception pretty quickly as you enter Canada. Likewise, for offshore, you're going to get more coverage with Sirius XM as you go offshore in the islands, although neither one of these systems, to be fair, really goes deep into the Caribbean. With ADS-B, it does depend how close you are to a ground station. So if you fly out west, especially lower level, coverage may be somewhat spotty if you're far away from a large uh, city or from a tower. East of the Mississippi, on the other hand, you're going to have coverage in most places at pattern altitude. Uh, here at Frederick, Maryland, you'll get reception with ADS-B just a couple hundred feet in the air. So making the right decision does depend on where you fly most often, where you're based out of, uh, and what your coverage is like for ADS-B. It's important to note that ADS-B, when we talk about ADS-B weather, means ADS-B in. That's the data link part you receive in the airplane. And that's totally separate from ADS-B out. That's the system that you install in your airplane to transmit out, basically an upgraded transponder. So, if you're talking about the FAA mandate or transponders or anything like that, that's ADS-B out, and that's a separate subject. ADS-B in, as we're talking about here, is not mandatory. So you can fly with ADS-B out in your airplane and Sirius XM in your airplane, or you can fly with ADS-B out and ADS-B in. It's really your choice. The two pieces of the system are totally separate. One other important difference with Sirius XM and ADS-B is monthly subscriptions. ADS-B, there are no subscriptions because it's a FAA program, your tax dollars paid for it. With Sirius XM, there is a monthly subscription, and it varies in cost depending on what weather products you want. You can suspend your subscription for up to six months at a time, so if your flying is more seasonal, that's a great option if you want to fly with Sirius XM. There are also some differences in weather products available with these two systems. Now, this gets complicated in a hurry, and honestly, a lot of it doesn't matter. So let's focus on some of the high-level weather products that do matter. For most pilots, that starts with radar. Both of these systems deliver composite reflectivity radar. That's what most pilots are used to looking at. That's where the radar will scan all the different elevations of the atmosphere, and it will display the, basically the worst case scenario. So if there's red somewhere in that scan, it'll show red. That's what most pilots are used to looking at, and that's the standard in ADS-B, and that's available with Sirius XM. Some pilots also like to look at base reflectivity. That's the lowest scan angle from a radar. That, in general terms, shows what's coming out the bottom of a cloud. And with Sirius XM, that's an option as well. Maybe that's not important for everyday flying, but if you're kind of a weather geek and you know what you're looking at, there is some advantage to comparing and contrasting base versus composite reflectivity. There's also a difference between Sirius XM and ADS-B when it comes to update rate of the radar. This means really two things. One, how often the data is transmitted to you. And two, how often the actual weather product itself is updated. So you could have a weather product that's updated every 10 minutes, but it's transmitted every two minutes. You're really getting 10 minute old weather, not two minute old weather. 
Again, don't get bogged down too much in the details, but it's important to be aware that there is a difference there. With Sirius XM, the radar is transmitted every two and a half minutes. So you're getting not real time because no data link weather product is real time, but you're getting a fairly recent uh, weather picture with the radar. With ADSB, there are actually two radar products, a regional and a national or CONUS product. The regional product is available within about 250 miles of your airplane. It's sent every two and a half minutes, although it's a five minute update on the actual radar picture. Again, that difference, not too significant, uh, but it's important to note that the product itself is updated every five minutes. When you get beyond that 250 mile range, then you're into the CONUS product. Two important things there. One, it's updated every 15 minutes, not every five minutes, so a little bit longer on the update. And two, it's a lower resolution product. So within that 250 mile range of your airplane, you'll see a fairly high resolution picture of radar. As you get beyond that, you'll notice it get a little bit blockier. That's not a problem, that's just the way the ADSB system works. And as you fly along, as you get closer and closer to that blocky radar, it will eventually get higher resolution as it gets within 250 miles. In addition to the basic radar, there are some nice add-ons that can give you more of a 3D picture of what you're looking at with weather. First is lightning. Both systems transmit lightning, although as we've said many times, there are subtle differences, so here's another one. With ADS-B, you're getting cloud-to-ground lightning. With SiriusXM, you're getting cloud-to-ground and cloud-to-cloud lightning. Really the most important thing with lightning is it lets you know if the weather you're looking at is convective or not. You can have yellow radar returns uh, that are not convective at all. It's maybe just stratus clouds with some moderate rain. And for an instrument pilot, that'd be no problem to fly through. On the other hand, you might have yellow returns over the central part of the U.S. with lots of lightning. And that's a signal that there's something more serious going on there, that there's something convective. So lightning by itself is not always the most important thing, but lightning in addition to radar really gives you a better feel for the weather. Why would you care about the difference between cloud to cloud and cloud to ground lightning? Well, in a developing storm where a lot of the energy in the storm is still going up, cloud to cloud lightning will generally appear sooner. Cloud to ground lightning usually happens as the storm has matured and things are coming out the bottom of the cloud in that dissipating stage. So cloud to cloud lightning can give you a little bit of an earlier indicator that there may be some convective activity in that cell ahead of you. Sirius XM goes even further. There's a weather product called Storm Tops and Storm Tracks. This gives you data about the highest point in a certain radar return. So if you're tracking a line of thunderstorms, you can see whether those tops are at 20,000 feet and maybe developing or at 50,000 feet and something really severe. You can also see the direction and speed of movement. And this again gives you a good idea of how that weather situation is developing. If it's a fast moving cold front that's really going to be throwing some nasty storms out in front of it, or if it's more of a steady state storm in Florida that's just built up and is going to dissipate out. They both can be threats, but it's important to know which way and how fast they're moving. One important thing to remember with data link radar is it should never be used for picking your way through tightly embedded storms. This product is for big picture awareness, for understanding where the weather is and where it's moving. But especially if you're inexperienced, you should never use one of these products to navigate your way tightly around storms or even heavy rain. As you build experience, you can understand a little bit more deeply whether something is convective or not and whether the yellow is safe to fly through or not. But it bears repeating that neither one of these products, no matter how current, no matter what subscription level you're on, should ever be used to navigate closely around storms. The best bet is to give it a wide berth. In addition to radar, satellite imagery can give you a good sense of the weather around you as well. This is not available on ADSB, so if satellite's important to you, you'll want to choose SiriusXM because it is available on that system. Both systems also deliver text weather. This includes METARs, TAFs, pilot reports, AIRMETs, SIGMETs. A lot of these products you may be used to, but with an iPad app especially, you can really use these products more effectively because they're displayed visually. So instead of just reading coded text, you can see it on a map in relation to your aircraft position and in relation to your aircraft route. So for example, an air mat that you may hear broadcast over the radio, it's pretty hard to draw that in your head where that is. But with data link weather, you can see it on your map and gives you a much better sense of where that potentially dangerous weather is compared to your route. One important difference between ADS-B and Sirius XM when it comes to METARs and TAFs is that while Sirius XM transmits all the METARs and TAFs for the continental US, ADS-B only transmits certain METARs and TAFs depending on where you are and what type of ground station you're receiving. So for example, if we were flying from here in Frederick to California, 
right after takeoff with SiriusXM, you would see all the METARs and TAFs that are available nationwide. With ADSB, you're going to see all the METARs and TAFs within about 500 miles of your air aircraft, again, depending on which ground stations you're receiving. But then beyond that, you'll only see the larger airports, really the Class B airports. So if we're flying to California, you would see LAX from 1,000 miles out, but you would not see some of the smaller general aviation airports from further out. Again, like radar, as you get closer, you'll start to see more of those fill in. But it's important to understand the limitation, especially if you're flying a high-performance airplane, maybe where 1,000 miles gets covered in a short amount of time. This is where it can be nice to have Sirius XM so that you always have your destination METAR and TAF available. TFRs is another really important product. It's important to note, though, that the ADSB and Sirius XM systems that transmit TFRs should not be considered an exhaustive list. In my experience, they're very, very good, but every year there's a couple that slip through and aren't in there or aren't in there right away, especially as TFRs pop up last minute. So it's important to have some other backstop, whether it's calling flight service, calling uh, air traffic control. You never want to de depend exclusively on data link for TFRs, and you never want to really pick your way around the edge of a TFR really closely. It's sort of the same mentality of radar. Know that the TFR is there and give it a wide berth. When you're flying with data link weather, you want to go beyond just radar and METARs and TAFs. There are some other products that can really help you get a 3D sense of the atmosphere. Three in particular that are helpful are turbulence forecasts, icing forecasts, and cloud tops. All three of these are available on both ADSB and Sirius XM, although there are a couple differences we'll point out in a second here. The turbulence forecast product, again, is a forecast, so this is not observed. That would be a pilot report if you want to know about the actual ride conditions. But it does allow you to look at different altitudes and see where there might be a smoother or a rougher ride out there today. Same with icing. Icing allows you to look at different levels, different altitudes in the atmosphere and see where the forecast icing is. Again, this is a forecast product, so you want to use this as advisory information, not as solid gold, but it's very helpful, especially in the wintertime with maybe shallow decks of clouds. You can get a sense for where the bases are, where the tops might be, and again, it's available on both of them. Cloud tops sort of related to both of those because clouds can indicate where icing is and also where maybe a rougher ride is. And they're also very helpful if you're a VFR pilot. This is available on both systems, but it's a little bit different. With ADSB, you're getting a forecast product of those cloud tops. And again, you can use a, a slider to look at where the highest cloud tops are at different altitudes. With SiriusXM, you're actually getting observed data there. That's helpful, but it's worth knowing that this is not really precise data. This is not something you should trust to within you know, a couple hundred feet. It's to give you a general sense of the atmosphere, of where is there maybe a thin layer of stratus versus where is there really a thick layer that might be cumulus out there. It's helpful for that, but don't get caught up trying to pick you know, 500 feet or 1,000 feet at a time. It's not made for that. It's important to note with some of these higher end products, as you move beyond radar, METARs, and TAFs, that if it's Sirius XM, some of these products may require a higher level subscription. So if you're really interested in turbulence or cloud tops or some of these things, check online, make sure you check the subscription levels and what's available. Also check your device, your receiver and your display device, whether it's an iPad or a, a cockpit product. Make sure you have the latest software. Sometimes new products are added and that may require a software update to display the latest information. Whichever data link weather system you're flying with, make sure you regularly check up on its health. This should be part of your regular cockpit scan. In particular, check the timestamp, whether it's on a panel mount screen or on an iPad. Make sure you're getting current data. So if you ever see data that's 20 or 30 minutes old, you might have a problem and it's worth investigating that. However, just because you've got a timestamp that's two minutes old doesn't mean that weather is two minutes old. That weather could be 10 or 15 minutes delayed further. The reason is that that timestamp usually tells you when you receive that data, whether it's from satellites on Sirius XM or from the ground with ADSB. But before it even gets transmitted, that data has to be collected, processed, and then sent up through that system. So it could, again, be 15 minutes from the time that radar actually swept the sky until it's processed, transmitted, and received on your iPad app or on your panel mount screen. So Check the timestamp, make sure you're getting current weather, but don't assume that just because the timestamp says two minutes ago that you've got two minute old weather. So because all data link weather is inherently delayed, you should never use it for tactical avoidance of weather. It should be used strategically to know where the big systems are and to deviate around them well before you get there. It also means flying with your eyes. Your eyes really should always get the veto. If you see something out the front that looks like it's bad weather, you should treat it as if it is bad weather. 
The data link weather is there to fill in the picture, to give you that long range view, to help make better decisions in advance, but it should never overrule what you see out the front of the window. The Mark 1 eyeball is by far the best weather sensor in the airplane. Flying with data link weather in the cockpit really does make flying safer. It's probably the biggest revolution in flying for general aviation pilots since GPS. But that does mean you have to do it safely. So always get the big picture first. Always trust your eyes. Always go beyond radar and METARs to get the full picture of the weather. If you use those tips, you really can fly safer with this product. When it comes to picking the right one, it's really a matter of matching the product to your type of flying. Think about where you fly, what you fly, what features are important to you and your experience level, and match the right system and potentially subscription level to that type of flying.